My name is Dan Kabala, Fox Chapel grad. Um, excited to be back in Pittsburgh. I'm the director of player personnel and recruiting coordinator here at the University of Pittsburgh. I don't know if any of you have ever seen the NCAA rule, rule book, but it's about that thick. All right, so we're going to try to go over that and some other stuff in about 12 minutes. So we're going to trim it down, but I think you'll get something out of this so you can talk some recruiting when you go home. Um, there's four periods in the, dead, or in the recruiting cycle. The first period is the dead period. No kids are allowed on campus. We can't be on their campus. And you have one phone call a week to seniors. In the quiet period, okay, you're allowed one phone call to seniors a week. They are allowed on our campus. We're not allowed on their campus. The next period is evaluation period. One phone call a week to seniors. They're allowed on our campus. We're allowed on their campus, but we can't talk to them when we're there, okay? And finally, contact period, unlimited phone calls. They're allowed on our campus, and we're allowed on their campus, and we're allowed to talk to them, go do home visits, see their high school coaches. We're allowed to actually have contact with them, okay? Um, the first time you can communicate with a football prospect is September 1st of their junior year. That's the first time. So we use mail, we use Facebook, we use Twitter, we use Instagram, we use whatever we can to try to get our message across to these juniors and seniors. And I honestly, some of you have probably heard me say this before, but I think that our mail outs and our marketing campaign is probably one of the best in the country. So you can see just a few things um, right there. Those are some of the things we send out. The other way you can communicate is phone calls. This is where it gets a little tricky, okay? As a junior, you can call them once from April 15th to May 31st. Only once, okay? When they become seniors, you can call from September 1st to November 30th. You get one phone call a week to them, okay? And then during the contact period, which is pretty much runs from the first half of December and the second half, to half of January, you have unlimited phone calls. So you can call them as much as you want. You can call their coach, you can call their parents, you can call whoever you want, okay? My role, people who work under me, we can never call a recruit, ever. So they can call us, we can pick up the phone, but I can never ever call a recruit until they sign a national letter of intent, okay? And in football, text messaging is strictly prohibited. So imagine dealing with these 15, 16, to 17 year olds right now without being able to text them. You guys know how hard that is, but that's the rule, okay? Um, contact or evaluation. This is when we can go see the kids, all right? So from April 15th to May 31st, you can go to their school twice with a max of two coaches going during that time period. You can't talk to them while you're there. You're basically call it an athletic evaluation and an academic evaluation, okay? Um, yeah, so you can't speak to the coach or the kids at that time. And our head coach is not allowed to go out during that time period, okay? In the fall of their senior year, September 1st to about November 30th, same thing, you get one visit during that time to see them. You can't talk to them, um, but you get one visit, max of two coaches can go at that time, all right? And then during the winter recruiting period, which is the contact period, um, all 10 coaches are allowed on the road to go see the kids. You can send 10, 10 coaches in to see a kid at one time. Um, the, this is the time where the head coach is allowed to go see a prospect in his house, in his school, okay? But the head coach can only go once during that time period to see that kid. Visits, there's unofficial visits, there's official visits. An unofficial visit, is they're unlimited, they're allowable at any time except during the dead period. So no one's allowed on campus during the dead period. Um, prospect has to pay for everything when they do unofficial visits, okay? Now, official visits are a little more formal. Those are when we're allowed to bring them in and show them everything that Pittsburgh, the university, has to offer. All right, you're allowed to take one to each school during your senior year, and you're allowed five max, okay? We had a prospect who wanted to come visit Florida State game, but he didn't start school until September 8th that year, so he couldn't come on an official visit for the Florida State game. He committed to us later in the season, but I think we would have got it done earlier, but he wasn't allowed, okay? 
we're allowed to have, use 56 official visits during the school year. If you don't use 56, you get six carryover. So the most you could ever have is 62 during your year. Okay, we can pay for everything. We can pay for their flights. We can pay for uh, their mileage reimbursement. We can pay for their hotel rooms. And we can pay for um, meals for four family members plus them. Okay, that just changed this year. We cannot pay for our parents' flight. We can pay for the kids' flight. We can't pay for the parents' flight. I don't know why that is, but those are the rules. All right, now we're going to move on to a little something else. Um, signing day to signing day. So one calendar year, what do our coaches do? The first Wednesday in every February is National Signing Day. All right, this is when seniors can sign their national letter of intent. It's a binding document that says you're going to attend a certain university. As soon as they sign, sign that NLI and fax it in, we can call them unlimited, we can text message them, and that's when I can actually call them. So they're pretty much part of your team at that point. You can also send your team's workout plan once you get their NLI, okay? For juniors in February, this is when we usually have our first junior day. We try to get them down, invite them to a basketball game. Our coaches are evaluating tape, background, transcripts, just getting to know the kids as much as possible in their area and at their position. And you can see this was our signing class from last year. And then this is our invite to the Duke game we sent out to the juniors, okay? Um, in March, what we do is we're updating our recruiting board. All right, this is kind of like our depth chart, you know, the draft board, like some of you guys who like to watch the draft, that's what this is. We're inviting prospects to spring practice. We're trying real hard to get them to campus to come get to know us. And then we are starting to set up the April and March road evaluation schedule, okay? I shouldn't say March, April, May, sorry about that. Um, but this is just a kind of a, an outdated example of our prospect board, which our coaches can have on their computer, their iPads, they can take it on the road. It's color coded, has certain things, but that's kind of way that they can stay organized. Well, we move on to April. April is when the evaluation period starts, okay? So April 15th, our coaches can go out on the road. It goes till May 31st. You're allowed your one phone call at this point, and we're allowed 168 evaluation days in the spring. So if our coaches go out, if all nine go out on April 15th, the first day, that's nine out of our 168. So that's how we calculate it, okay? Um, the head coach is not allowed out in the spring. You're allowed into the school twice with a max of two coaches. And then this is another way we keep our coaches organized. The green days are days that we said are gonna be uh, on the road, evals. The red days are days we are gonna be in the office at, uh, looks like the 13th was the first day of class last year. So we like to have all our coaches back for the first day of class. And then the yellow day was a junior day we had, which we'll talk about next. So we move on to May. Our coaches like to go out on the road for about three weeks, collect as much information as they can, and then we come back and have those two red days. We do big recruiting meetings all day and all night. And that's when we start to set our board and have a better feeling for who's gonna be on our board, all right? Um, and then we go back out for two more weeks, get more information, see those kids a second time, the ones that we prioritized. And then at the end of May, right before um, the Memorial Day holiday, we have a big recruiting meeting and we finalize our recruiting board for that year. This is another time when you're really trying to get recruits on campus, have more personalized junior visits, okay? And we also are working real hard to invite prospects to camp, which is very important for us. This is an example of a day that we did last May. That was a beautiful day, and you can see we got some pretty big hitters involved because we had some local prospects. We saw the chancellor, Miles Karajin, who played football here for us and is now our academic coordinator. We put him at the end of Varsity Walk as we walk from the cathedral to the Heinz Chapel because he's on Varsity Walk. And we think it's neat for our local kids to see how important it is to get your name on that Varsity Walk. So he get, does a little talk, and we do Heinz Chapel, we go have lunch, and then we bring another big hitter, Vice President and Dean of Students, Dr. Kathy Humphrey. She has more enthusiasm, excitement for Pitt than probably anyone for any university in the whole, in the whole uh, country. And then we return to campus. We give them the option to do football meetings, but sometimes we like to get them out here before traffic. Okay, so there's little things that you try to avoid during these visits to make it as good as possible. June is a big, big month for us. This is the one time our coaches can bring prospects in 
and evaluate them, work with them, coach them, see if they're competitive, see how they like to work. Do they love football? Are they tough? This is the one time they can do it. Okay, so we have one day camps in June, June 6th, 7th, 13th, and 14th. And this past year we signed 23 kids. Okay, 15 of them were at our camp. So it's very important to us. The year before we had signed 27 and 16 of them were at our camp. Because we like to see it with our own eyes. Okay? Um, and a lot more unofficial visits in June. We get a lot of unofficial visits here at Pitt. I think it's because we're centralized between a lot of places, but we get a lot. So it's a busy month for us. Um, see how important camp is? I think you guys know who this, this person is. That's Aaron Donald. He had no offers. Came to Pitt, got an offer. He ended up with three offers. And now he's one of the most decorated players in the history of college football. It's kind of interesting. I'm glad he won all those awards because to use him on this camp brochure, you can't use current players. So we use those nice little trophies to cover up our current players. So good thing he got that done, right? But you can also see that barcode down there. Some of the recruits who were here earlier just told me, say, coach, you guys are on the cutting edge of that. They just take their phone, they scan it. It's the, it's the generation that we're in. They scan it. And even with sophomores now, we're allowed to send questionnaires to sophomores. So we just put that barcode on there, ask them, do they like Twitter or Facebook better? What's your nickname? And they scan it and it submits right to us. And we keep track of all that stuff in our database. So it's just another way for us to track them. And they said we're the first team that's really doing that. So we like to be in front for everything. June's a busy month. So July is vacation, all right? AK, uh, this is the first year from July 1st to July 14th, the NCAA instituted a dead period. Okay, so it's good for the coaches, it's good for the kids. Everyone needs a break from recruiting. So no one's allowed on campus, we're not allowed to have kids on campus, we're not allowed to call them. It's just dead. It's going to be good for everyone. And you know how we talked about um, limited phone calls and evaluation days? We have a max. In my household, we have about five days where my wife takes my phone, puts it in the hotel safe and doesn't tell me the combination. All right, so that's, that's kind of our vacation right there, but that's, that's how it is for all our coaches. It's just, just how it is. All right, August. August 1st is the first time you can send out a written offer, a scholarship offer. I know that sounds crazy because you guys hear about sophomores having offers and eighth graders having offers, which is crazy to me, but that's the first time you can send out an official offer letter, August 1st of their senior year. All right. That's the point where we're going to training camp. We're trying to get our prospects to training camp also so they can see how we're working. And then this is the time we hit them up on home games. We send like, you know, wedding save the dates. We try to send out save the dates because these kids are getting hit a lot. Come to our game, come to this game, come to that game. So we send out a save the date. Um, and then we begin scheduling September where we're gonna, our coaches are gonna go on the road. That was the, uh, that was the, uh, the golden ticket we used to send our recruits, our top recruits this year for the Florida State game. Some kids actually brought that to the game. They thought they needed to, to get in, but it's just another marketing propaganda, to, you know. So. Um, September, same thing. Seniors are now allowed to take their official visit if their classes have started. You're allowed one phone call per week, and then the pit coaches are allowed to visit those schools, and we invite them to pit home games. That's an example of something we sent out to get them to the Virginia game. Okay, October's the same, invite to home games, one call per week, pit coach is allowed to visit school per once, that one in the top right corner, that's our invite to the New Mexico game, um, and then this is when you can really start getting your message out, All right, we're very proud of the fact that we had six honorees on the ACC All Academic Team, All right, second in the conference, very proud of that, we think we have a beautiful campus, a unique campus, so we have a whole mail out uh, schedule for, called Campus Life, and obviously that's Heinz Chapel. And then we're also proud of the fact that you can play big time college football and you can also get a great degree. Two years ago, we had 13 seniors who already had their degree before their senior, senior season started. That's second most in the country. And trust me, moms like to hear that on recruiting visits, all right? So it is important. Uh, November, you invite the home games, one call per week, pit coach is allowed to visit. This is when you set up, you're trying to pick the right kids to come on a, their official visits together so they can mesh they can get a good relationship with people going so they can recruit each other, okay? Obviously, we try to get all our commits to that Notre Dame game. We knew we were going to have a great turnout, and we knew we were going to win, so we got them there, and it was great for everyone, everyone involved. 
Obviously, when you have a national game, you're going to use Kirk, Kirk Herbstreit and Brent Musburger because it makes it's a big time event, right? And then anytime you get a big win or you get an, uh, an award winner from the previous week, you use that as much as possible. And then December, we go we start our official visits. This is when coaches can go all all ten can go on the road. The head coach can go out. We're allowed to visit each school once a week, each prospect once a week. You're allowed to see them six six times. Okay. Happy holidays. Pump your bowl game information out. This is, we're going to go over this real fast. This is an official visit itinerary. We have every minute planned how they're getting there. Logistics are very important, okay? But we're not going to go over this whole thing, but you can see we keep them busy. We try to get them around our team as much as possible, our players, our coaches. And it's a time, we, we look at it as a celebration, a celebration of them coming to Pitt. It's a great time for them and their families to be at Pitt. All right. January, all right, you're planning upcoming junior day for the next class of juniors. Official visits are wrapping up. Ten coaches are still on the road, and you're starting to prep for National Signing Day. NOI, the National Letters of Intent, they go out in the end of January. Um, we have a great media department who produces our signing day coverage. I hope some of you got to see that. And then we have a signing day event at Heinz Field. So that's January. After they sign their NOI, this is the first time you can, in two years, this is the first time that we as an institution can publicize a kid's name. So imagine that. These kids have been recruiting for two years and not once are we allowed to mention their name. But we're fired up that Alex Bookster from Mount Lebanon is coming here. He's going to be a great player. Adonis Jennings is another one. We send all this stuff out through Twitter. We send all this stuff out through Facebook, Instagram. And the kids love this. When they get this stuff on signing day, they're fired up. They're fired up because it's a celebration. It's a big day for them and their families. And then we're also really excited to get Mike Grimm here from Bethel Park. Keep getting those big uglies up there, the offensive line. Quick summary. Every month, you should be able to see those kids, or they should see you. And you should have a plan to see them every month. It's really not that hard to do, as you see that we just went through. We try to see them every month from their junior year to signing day. On the right there, you're allowed to have 85 total scholarships per year. What you do is you replace your seniors, okay? So we have 13 seniors this year. We get to replace them. Those 13 scholarships we get to replace. And then you can average about two to three. It's safe to say that by the time after signing day till the start of fall camp, two to three will leave your program. So that's the way, you, that's a buffer that you plan for, okay? We're allowed to bring 105 to camp which you have 85 scholarships, you go get 20 walk-ons, okay? And we had, we had, we, we placed a new emphasis on getting better walk-ons, and I think you'll see the ones we brought in, we're gonna have a, have a good group, and we're gonna keep that growing. Um, Aaron Donald, so proud of what he accomplished at Pitt. He summarized everything that Coach, Coach Chris and this staff stands for, go to work. That's what we're about, and that's what we want our, our kids to be about. Okay, so we're using him on our camper sure this year. He's earned it, and he's a great representation of going to work. So those camper shirts are out front. I think some of you got them when you got here, but I can't stress how important this is. If you know players who want to play at Pitt, you got to get them to camp. And they can come as freshmen. You got to come to camp. You got to come to camp. I want to thank all you guys for coming. We really appreciate it. Once again, your support is amazing and. We can't thank you enough for your support, and as always, hail to Pitt.